Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the program. Uh, today there's a, a Stone Age built, boat building site uh, discovered near the Isle of Wight here um, in the south, within the English Channel, in the, the south of uh, England here. If you've seen my episode on Doggerland and a couple of other episodes on Scotland and the Cranigs and, and uh, stuff like that, then uh, you've heard me talk about a bunch that the English Channel and the North Sea were still forming at around 8,000 uh, years ago. So about 6,000 BC it was still f in the middle of getting flooded. So it didn't exactly look how it looks now that you see on the map. And then they found off the Isle of Wight here, a, a boat building site. And here's a picture of one of the planks that they found. And they found it in what they're calling an underwater forest. So basically what that means the long and short of that is there used to be some terrestrial vegetation here it was it was lush around that time and then as it got submerged uh, all that the canopy and all all that plant life just fell by the wayside into the english channel and then you have uh, stuff like this that is now being discovered so the stone age boat building site that uh, include discover the the researchers into the technological developments not thought to have been developed for thousands more years has been discovered off the UK coast the site which is submerged 36 feet underwater was discovered in 2005 but they didn't really know what the structure was used for at the time they found the wooden structure was made up uh, contained trim timbers that scientists believe could have been walkways platforms or uh, merely collapsed structures so yeah if you see that you can you can kind of make it out there's like a 90 degree angle here. It looks obviously like a plank among a bunch of other uh, debris and stuff like that. So it could have easily been some sort of like port or or something that that was a landing site or a, a takeoff site for for uh, uh, boats and other uh, maritime related activity. Uh, however, returning to the site in late spring, the team found a new structure sticking out from the drowned forest it sits in. Um, they they used uh, imaging 3d imaging um, and they created a model of the landscape and then from there they they picked out the best place to excavate and then what they did was they excavated the platform it was made up of several layers of timber and you can kind of make out the layers here as well if you can really see i have a link um to to the article in, in the uh in, at the bottom in the description below but you can you can if you look at the photo then you can kind of make out the the wooden the layers of timber there on the plank and then they also think that or they saw that it was placed on a wooden foundation which was laid horizontally to, so again this place without a doubt was above water at some point in the in the past and it, it just brings more and more evidence to the fact that doggerland did exist the english channel wasn't always the english channel and that england was connected to the mainland um, not too long ago and that there are people not just hunter gatherers living there there are people capable of constructing things like this um, there as well and then there's another article that I didn't talk about but uh, the ancient Greeks also had like a pulley crane system uh, around this time as well so it again if, when you piece everything together it does seem like there was some uh, level of tech uh, technology that the people at the time were using so they weren't all just primitive uh, people just learning how to uh, build things and how to sail the oceans and stuff like that they uh, they knew what they were doing they, they had a repository of information that they were tapping into and they were uh, they were definitely uh, building it and, and, and fanning out into the earth out, out into the oceans and out across continents and stuff like that so they not only were they working on stuff like that they were probably aware of other populations of people as well uh, the new structure, which dates back 8,000 years, is part of the oldest boat building site in the world. Uh, it sits on the coast of the Isle of Wight, an island off the so uh, south coast of England. I just showed you that here uh, at this, at this uh, pinprick here. Uh, the site contains a wealth of evidence for technological skills that were not thought to have been developed for a further couple thousand years, such as advanced woodworking. And that's among uh, uh, shipbuilding and advanced woodworking. Those two are pretty much go hand in hand. Um, when you're talking about advanced woodworking, there's a lot that unlocks a whole different tree of, of uh, uh, potential 
buildings and and and, and contraptions and constructions that uh, people could build. Uh, this, shi uh, this site shows uh, the value of marine ar archaeology for understanding the development of civilization, um, as well as advanced woodworking. Research has also found a crafted tools that indicate a more advanced European influence. So again, um, in this site, let's go to this picture here. There, there not only were there planks here, there are tools lying around, um, tools that were not thought uh, typical of the time, and um, a more advanced European influence. This is something that a lot of people are looking into. Could it have been the Scythians? Could it have been um, some other people from the Caucasus Mountains that made it all the way over here? Uh, no one knows for sure, uh, but they do know that the genetics of those people were would have been in those people at the time around 8,000 years ago uh, who were occupying these lands here. So it could be. At this time, the North Sea was yet to fully form, so the Isle of Wight would have still been connected to mainland Europe. So this island here still would have been connected to uh, Upper Normandy, probably, and, and uh, p uh, parts of France. So this wasn't that long ago. This is 8,000 years ago. This is um, just a couple thousand years before the Old Kingdom of, of Egypt. So um, people don't realize how young the English Channel is, and that is one of the um, more eye-opening things of, of all of this research here. Um, this region would have been covered in lush vegetation. The land between Europe and southern England was part of uh, Doggerland, so uh, basically all of this, the North Sea, and, and down into uh, the English Channel here. Uh, this connected the UK to Europe and would have been home to Mesolithic people before sea levels uh, rises and submerged the landscape. So the Mesolithic people were the people who were living there at the time. Um, and then um, w in the previous episode of Doggerland, there were... Not only were there people living there, it seemed like there were people settled there, and then there were people coming and going, so there was a trade network. So there was a lot going on there, and if there's a trade network, there's probably some sort of uh, either writing or oral language system, some, some sort of form of communication that was consistent and used amongst the people living there, these, quote, Mesolithic people. Um, so now they, they're taking the artifacts and stuff. They, they took them to the National Oceanography Center. Um, so the information is stored in it because it's ancient wood, it's damp, um, and these engravings and cut marks that are in there are going to be lost. So th they've got to really be careful in preserving all of this stuff. Um, and uh, Momber, he's, uh, he's one of the divers here, he says, This new discovery is particularly important as a wooden platform is part of a site that doubles the amount of worked wood found in the UK from a period that lasted 5,500 years. So... Um, yeah, this whole site, there's probably a, a lot of stuff going on uh, along the southern coast here. And probably at the bottom of the English Channel as well. There's probably so many things here um, that it it's probably going to open up a lot of investigation. A lot of funding is probably going to go into uh, um, mapping this part out. Not just mapping it out, but just uh, mapping the seafloor and seeing what's there on the bottom. Because a lot of people just take that for granted and think that they've already done all that legwork. It hasn't been done. There, there, there aren't enough. I think I mentioned on Grimerica that there aren't enough uh, resources and enough manpower to really get this whole thing going. Although it is going, it's not. Uh, it's not as expedient a process as you would think. Uh, so anyway, let me go know what you guys think about this. This is really uh, interesting stuff here. Um, uh, it, it, they're probably going to find a lot of things and the Isle of Wight always was a, a, an interesting uh, blip on the map. I, I've always thought it was, um, there must have been something there just because, not only because of the sea level rising and falling, but um, it just seems like it's, it has a rich history here and that there were people also uh, the Romans being one of them aware of the, the mystery of this entire place. So I'm going to leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you guys later.